length. So areas of polar curves. So we know that a polar curve is given to us as a function of theta. So r is equal to f of theta. And the idea is we know we can find out um, area if we converted this function into the Cartesian coordinates of x and y and then try to get it, we'll try to get a function y is equal to f of x or like uh, x is equal to f of y. Um, no. So we know how to find the area in this case, but ideally we would want to just utilize this uh, easier representation where everything's in terms of theta and vary theta um, in a way that gives us an easy formula to find out the area um, in a plane. So how would we do that? So the first thing we need to do is kind of find a relationship between how the um, polar curve looks and the area in a plane. So let's say we have this random polar curve, this like pedal over here. Um, we know that a particular point on this curve, let's say this point, is some point f of um, theta of k. And that point basically defines um, this r value at that point, um, where this is some theta k, and then what our value is produced is that r value at that point, and that gives us um, the graph for f of theta. And this is on this like Cartesian plane, right? So how do we find the area? And we want to find an, the area in a way that we vary theta. So let's see what happens when we vary theta. When we vary theta um, and we keep this r, this radius the same, we get sort of uh, an arc, right? So we have this arc sort of forming and we have this sector that's forming. So essentially we're varying theta. Well, so taking some like minus theta minus like delta theta and then over here this is like plus delta theta and that forms this arc and we know how to find and when we have this arc with radius r we know how to find that area of that slice so the slice of um that arc is simply one half or the slice of that sector formed by just this arc arc is simply one half um r square times uh, delta theta k where the delta is how much we're varying, um, varying our theta, and that gives us that slice. And we know through Riemann sums is that if we form these infinitely many slices across uh, the different points that we have on this curve, that will give us the total area. And note that this is the same thing as one half um, f of theta k times delta theta k. So we have some point and then we're varying theta and that gives us the area of the slice when we vary theta. And so well, our analysis of Riemann sums gives us that the total area or the approximate of that total area is simply um, the summations of all the slices that we formed. And that's simply the summation from k is equal to one of two n of one half f of theta k squared times delta um, theta. Yeah, that's, I forgot this r squared. All right, so adding up all of those slices gives us the estimate of the area. And this is a Riemann sum in terms of theta, right? So if we were to uh, take the limit as delta theta tends towards zero, that would give us um, an integral, and that integral would give us the area. So essentially, We've proven that the area, and let me really change the color to white. Through this analysis of um, the slices, we've proven that the area in polar coordinates is simply, the area in polar coordinates is simply equal to the integral from some angle alpha to some angle beta of one half r squared, where r is this function of theta times d theta. And this is just coming from this fact of the uh, Riemann sum slice that we analyzed of how this area 
um, on the plane would simply be one half times the function squared and then the delta theta which gets turned into d theta over here. So that's the formula to find out um, the area in polar coordinates and let's sort of apply that. So the first thing is uh, we want to find the area of region enclosed by the function r is equal to 2 times 1 plus cosine theta. So the first thing we want to do is uh, kind of fi figure out what this function looks like on the plane. So let's draw out our coordinate plane. Um, and we know that this is a uh, cardioid. And that comes from like um, just knowing common families of functions in the polar coordinates and the polar yeah in the polar coordinate and yeah if you want me to make another video on polar coordinates with covering these functions let me know and so what this function will look like we can even plug in like specific points at zero we'd have the radius take up four and then um when theta is pi over two that will be the lowest sort of point when theta is pi over two we get um this is zero and then take up two so two, and similarly, that's the case at three pi over two. And then when theta is negative, ne or theta is pi, then r will become zero, right? So essentially, because this is a cardioid, we would have our function look like this. And I kind of just plotted out the key points. And it's more circular, this is kind of off, like not to scale. But essentially, this is what our graph looks, and we want to find out this whole entire area. And one thing we notice is that um, the this function is symmetric across the across the um, x-axis. And here, we're not trying to find the signed area; we're just trying to find like the actual area. And so, we can find the integral from uh, theta equals zero to pi, and then double it to get the total area because of the symmetry. Or, I mean, since since the areas are defined by, like, these sectors, we actually don't even have to um, split it up, uh, and we won't have to worry about the negatives. And that's the one good part about having everything in polar, polar coordinates. So essentially, our we found the domain from 0 to 2 pi. So we found from 0 to 2 pi, and... Plugging into our area formula, it's just 0 to pi 1 half um, r squared, where r squared will just be 2 times 1 plus cosine theta squared d theta. Simplifying that, we get uh, 0 to 2 pi of 1 half uh, times 4 times 1 plus cosine theta squared d theta which I can rewrite as 2 times 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus 2 cosine squared theta d theta. And then using the cosine identities, um, cosine squared theta can be just written as 1 plus, so this is just the same thing as 1 plus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. And um, one way to see that is, uh, we know that cosine 2 theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And then um, sine squared theta is just 1 minus cosine squared theta. And therefore, you'd get uh, 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 is equal to cosine 2 theta. And then solve for cosine squared theta. So from 0 to 2 pi of... 2 plus 4 cosine theta plus 1 plus 2, 1 plus cosine 2 theta times d theta. 
and then this simplifies to 3 theta plus uh, 4 sine theta uh, plus 1 half sine 2 theta from 0 to 2 pi. And at 2 pi, all these are 0 except this, so we get 6 pi. And then at 0, everything 0, all of this is 0. So our answer is 6 pi, and that's our total area. Now, let's say, so that was an example of finding areas. Let's say uh, we want to find the area between two polar curves, right? And so before we just used the same thing as before where we were just subtracting out two integrals. Uh, let's make sure that is exactly the case uh, that we can use in this case. So again, let's go back to our rough drawing of some polar curve. So that's a, let's say this is some outer polar curve and then inside of it, we have this inner polar curve. We wanna find out the area between those two curves. So if we were to take that sector slice, um, what the area that we'd be concerned with is, or the area that we care about is this red area of the slice, right? And that red area is simply the outer slice minus the inner slice. And if the outer slice is some g of theta k, then this inner slice, um, the radius in that case is some f of theta k. We know that the area of the difference in the two sectors is just one half um, times f of theta k squared minus um, g of theta k squared times delta theta k. So this is what our integrand becomes. And this is clearly just one half f of theta k squared minus one half g of theta k squared. So, and then everything is multiplied by delta theta k, delta theta k. So in this case, when we want to find the area between two polar curves, we can just um, form two different integrals where we're just finding the area of like the outer curve. So like it can just be the same as finding the area of the outer curve um, through this f, this integral right here. So that would find that entire yellow shaded portion. And then we just subtract off um, the area that of the inner curve. So this green shaded portion. And what we're left over with is this, um, this red shaded portion over here, which is given to us by the difference of the two integrals. So that formally shows us that the area between two curves where one is um, f and one's uh, j or one is g is simply the integral from alpha to beta of one half f of theta squared minus g of theta squared d theta. So let's utilize this. Let's um, utilize this to solve a problem. And the problem is find the area of the region inside r is equal to one and outside r is equal to one minus cosine theta. So let's draw out r is equal to one since that's easier. That's just a circle. So we have a circle over here and we are we want the area inside that region. Um, and we want the area outside of one minus cosine theta. So when theta is equal to zero, uh, that takes on the value of zero. And since this is another cardioid, uh, the max value this takes on is when theta is pi. Uh, and it we get a value of two as a radius. So essentially we get something that looks like um, and then actually when theta is pi over two, um, our 
when theta is pi over 2, our, our cardio takes on a value of 1. So we get something that looks like this, I would say. Okay, so one thing that we need to do is first find out, oh, well, so the region that's inside r equals 1 and outside um, 1 minus cosine theta, it's this red region. And the first thing that we need to do is find the limits of integration, right? Um, so our lower limit and our upper limit. So let's first analytically calculate that. So when is 1 is equal to 1 minus cosine theta? And so cosine theta is equal to 0. That's when theta is equal to pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And so the region that we are worried about is going to be the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of um, basically the outer minus the inner, where the outer is just 1 squared minus the inner, which is 1 minus cosine theta squared d theta. And then we sum it with a similar integral from 3 pi, uh, 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. But notice how, um, like I mentioned before, the area beneath the x-axis is similar, is symmetric to the area above the x-axis. So we can just calculate this integral and then multiply it by 2. And that should tell us the total answer. So let's use that path um, to find out the entire area. And so essentially what we're doing is we're finding out the, or the, Integral that to find the area is simply 2 times this, and so I'll remove the 1 half, and that gets rid of the 2. So the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 minus uh, 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta d theta. And that's the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of um, cos 2 cosine theta minus cosine squared theta d theta. And we know from before that this is just the same as the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of um, 2 cosine theta minus 1 minus cosine 2 theta divided by 2 divided by 2 times d theta. And then finding the antiderivative is I get 2 sine theta minus 1 half theta uh, minus sine 2 theta divided by 4 from 0 to pi over 2. At pi over 2, only these two are defined. This will be 0 since I evaluate sine pi. And so what I get is 2 minus uh, pi over 4. And then at 0, everything is 0. So the answer is 2 minus pi over 4. So that was an example of... Um, the area between polar curves. Now I think we'll talk about lengths of curves later.